Hey friends, well it is uh, that time again. We're super excited. We are here live at the uh, 2022 drive-in cruise event and uh, it was an interesting day because uh, you can kind of see a little bit of dark clouds overhead. I don't know. I'm not in control of the weather. If I was, we wouldn't have any of that. It did rain a little bit earlier. I think it's going to be clear for most of the night. Uh, we got a lot of cars here and we're going to go take a walk and uh, see what's up right all right so first of all uh our friends from the shop brought out a few cars trevor brought his truck and uh there's my 62 ford and and the the yellow buick that we uh just finished up for my buddy paul there's a big long story on that car as it uh was originally featured in carcraft magazine this car belonged to David Freiberger and to Rob Canan, believe it or not. If you look, look up uh, Carcraft Magazine in the early 90s, you'll find this very car. And then the uh, the mythical 1967 GTO of our friend Mike Clark, Mike Cuball Clark, the co-host of the V8 Radio podcast. This is his GTO. It, it does live. It's a real car, and it's alive. So um, he drove it down from Chicago. Both these cars came down from Chicago. So uh, it's cool that they made it. Um, and then we've got a few that we're working on right now at the shop. This uh, 64 Corvette has a really cool uh, asymmetric paint scheme on it. And I'm, I'm having a little trouble with the phone here, folks. The uh, orientation's all sideways. But uh, our, our shop laid out the stripes and, and painted this one up, did a lot of work under the hood. It uh, looks like a cool vintage race car of sorts. And then a uh, 72 Corvette Roadster that uh, we're just getting finished up on that features an LS conversion under the hood, an LS3 with a uh, six-speed manual, six-speed uh, conversion. Our friends at Modern Driveline helped us out with some parts on that one. And uh, this car, just tons of fun to drive, Global West suspension, lots of cool stuff. A lot of people have come out uh, to, uh, to hang out with us tonight. We're watching two movies this time. Uh, first time we're doing a two different film option. We're gonna have uh, the original Fast and Furious on that screen, Dazed and Confused on that one. So people got to choose which, which side they want, which is turning into uh, multiple car shows, which is kind of cool. So we'll get over to that side in a little bit to see uh, what those guys brought out. But all right, one of the fun things I like about the drive-in cruise is the, uh, the diversity of the cars that you have here. Where, where else would you see a... Uh, a Porsche GT3 sitting next to a uh, 70s NASCAR tribute uh, up against kind of a kind of a rat style C10 step side with uh, you know louvers and stripes and you wonder what that's hiding and you know it's hiding something because it's got braces built into the floor right how are you Good to see you. Doing good. We're doing a little, a little live stream. Hi, Hi. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the rain. How you doing? Awesome. Tim, Tim you. Kevin Osti. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming out. Uh, this uh, this car is super cool. Obviously a petty tribute car, but not just a Charger that was painted up. This guy has done so many cool details to this. It looks like a legit race car inside, man. Look at the cage. And, you know, of course, the, uh, the gutted interior, Kirky racing seat, you got the gauges, you got the cool little mirror, um, you know, the Bassett wheels, you got the side exhaust. This one, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, has a Mopar small block in it. Uh, but with a four-speed, and it, it came to our shop a little while ago to do some clutch work and was a victim of waiting for parts on COVID, but uh, eventually everything showed up, and here it is, right on. Speaking of uh, wing cars, 1960 Impala, what a great-looking car. Look at the uh, interior on this thing. You got your houndstooth pattern. But what I really love is the shape, that kind of futuristic sweep in the, in the panels, and of course, that super sport steering wheel. Beautiful car. Very cool. Beautiful car. 
How are you, Tammy? Good. Hi, good to see you. Very cool Camaro. This one uh, featuring the split bumper in the front. Uh, this one's got a little mini tub in the back. Blacked out trim, great color. Of course, you can't have an event like this without a Cobra, Cobra replica. Everything blacked out. This is a backdraft car. These are interesting because they they change the dimensions a little bit on the backdraft to make them a little more comfortable to ride in and a little more accommodating. But 67 Camaro. This is a good look. This is your uh, your street machine look. You know, you're jacked up a little bit in the back, big wide tires. Still has the vinyl top. Of course, the whole SS package with the reverse lights down below the bumper and the solid red tail lights. Dig it. Cool little Dodge flatbed truck. Good to see that. Oh man, lots and lots and lots of stuff to see. This uh, Monte Carlo local guy named Clay owns this one. I don't know, 40 some thousand miles on this car. Fuel injected. Air blows cold, gotta dig it. How we doing? Welcome back. It is, uh, uh, considering we had a little bit of that, yes. we're very happy so far with the turnout. So Good. thanks for joining us again. Sure. Good to see you guys. A couple of modern Camaros. The cool thing is um, we've got a couple different generations right here. Uh, obviously, the, the towel is the grill at the first glance. But that orange one back there? That was delivered on Wednesday, so this is the first maiden voyage, and that's a, uh, a six-speed manual car. Uh, over here, something you don't see every day, 1963 Mercury, but it's featuring the breezeway rear window, right? So the these cars have kind of interesting looking roof line where the back window slopes towards the front of the car. But the reason for that is that rear window it rolls down and in order to make it roll down uh, it had to follow the contour of the back seat that's a power rear window and they uh they called it the breezeway cool looking car don't see them very often nice little uh lexus push button convertible belongs to a friend of ours dig that car here we have a gaggle of c3 corvettes We've got some of the earlier chrome bumper car, plastic bumper car, some more chrome bumper cars, plastic bumper cars. I'm going to say we have some uh, Corvette Club people here joining us today. Always great to see. We do a lot of work on Corvettes and uh, love to see them on the road. These cars are getting so popular right now, especially the chrome bumper ones. So this was kind of neat. This is a, uh, a you know suicide door Lincoln convertible. This one came in, and it was still raining just a touch. So <laughs> the guys came in under a plastic tarp. Uh, so it's a true rag top, but it had a, a tarp. But I'm just glad they brought it out. It's fun that uh, it still gets used, even though it's basically a roadster now. Very cool. K5 Blazer. How you doing? Good, fine. How you doing tonight? Good shirt. Thank you. you <laughs> That's our We're driving shirt for a couple year. of years. Well, thank you for coming back again. All right. Great to see you again. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, heck yeah. So, a bunch of C10s. Got a nice blue one going by over there. And then uh, this green one. It's a very cool truck. We did a lot of work on this in our shop. Uh, this belongs to uh, an individual who basically has known about this truck since 1988 kind of belonged to his uncle uh dad's good friend anyway and and uh it came to us we pulled it off the off the chassis redid the whole frame put lowered suspension on it bigger wheels put a brand new wood bed in it redid the whole interior so inside it's all brand new he's keeping it nice and clean which is cool um, but the goal was the Put new trim on the outside, but keep that 
nice worn look and you know, little bumps and bruises here and there and the West Helena Arkansas sticker on the side which is where this truck spent its whole life as a, a city municipal truck and now it's out having a good time with a fuel injected 383 overdrive transmission there's the man right there that drives it how's the truck doing brody doing, sir. we love it good we appreciate it well i so do too we got 9,850 miles on it oh right on in in, in, in a right. year basically time, yes. yeah good for you 10, miles. see truck gets used it looks great thank you you've been rubbing it down with uh that with, oil, with the, the, the lin linseed oil or whatever it was yeah yeah good all right well you see it we're really happy with it awesome appreciate thank you appreciate that great to see I dig that truck. Gentlemen, how are you? Good looking 67 Mustang. Small block four speed car. Dig that. One of the, uh, the you'll see these every day. Mercury Capri with the hatchback. Uh, do you remember back in the day they did a, a five liter version, a McLaren, a McLaren Capri, which was pretty cool. Let's see what this one has. Looks like a carbureted small block Ford. A couple of tricks, the camber caster plates, silicone hoses, a lot of stuff that you would see when this car was new. About 85, 86, what year? 83, older than that. All right. Well, thank you. And of course, our friend Charlie with the 73 Trans Am. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Very good. How's the car doing? Perfect. Awesome. Looks great. We uh, did some upgrades on this one in our shop with fuel injection on it and a gear vendor overdrive. This one has a, uh, a larger than stock Pontiac 462 under the hood, but otherwise looks like a beautiful stock restoration. And uh, Charlie and his wife have had this car since 85 i think right and so it's very cool that uh, it's still around 17 inch pontiac style wheels he's got his uh, eight track player and i remember <laughs> when we were doing work on this car I, I drove it home to his house and uh, listening to boston on the eight track uh, maybe a little bit more than that but buccaneer red love it so now we're gonna to go to the opposite extreme. And here is a 1958, how you doing buddy? Buick Roadmaster. Belonging to our friend Todd Martin right there. And this car is awesome. So it's, I don't even know what the technical name of the color, it's like a coral pink. But uh, these, Roadmasters, and I'm going to give away a trivia question. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, had the the largest amount of chrome and polished trim of any GM car, basically ever built. So 59 Cadillac. Now this had more, and it's all in these details, these little stripes and pieces of trim and the badges. Look at this three-dimensional badge that hides the trunk lock because this kind of spins out of the way. You got the the taillights that, that almost look like an Iron Man helmet, if you get creative. Got some sunshine coming on. Love that. This car looks good with the sun glinting off of it. Of course, a nailhead Buick and a Dynaflow automatic transmission. Gun sights on the fenders. That's so you can aim this thing going down the road. So here's another part of that immense amount of trim on this car is all these little bullets all the teeth are polished plated great looking car how you doing good good to see you look at the impala love this car i love these cars they have the the engine turned insert in the console in the early 60s cool looking this was also gm was doing this thing where it was kind of a simulated convertible top like there was a bow under there but it obviously is not innovative styling 
back in 63. We changed directions to a 67 Impala. Giant fastback roof line. These cars are really cool. Highly aerodynamic from about here back. <laughs> Got some street rides out tonight. Always love to see that. Again, the the fun variety of cars you get here at the driving cruise. How are you? And that's the thing is this is not a particular make or model show. Everybody's welcome. And that's what mixes it all up. That's a Pontiac Ventura. It's not a Nova. Kind of looks like one. Camaro Z28. One of the last GTOs, at least of the uh, the series. That's a 5.7, so it's one of the earlier ones. The last ones were actually six liters. And a very cool car, a 71 Cuda. Heck yeah. Vinyl top. It's got the exhaust through the valance. License plate says expired. It's got an expired license plate. Yeah, right on. Uh, look at the, the rub through on the paint job. Somebody started to paint it and then decided to stop but under here very detailed 440 magnum air conditioning hood pins aar style hood being a 71 it's got the four headlights and the what i like to call the gill shaped grill it is a cuda right cudas have gills they also have them here on the fender one of the very cool styling elements of these cars. This one's an automatic. I love to see my shadow there. That means there's sunshine on. Let's peek inside. The high back buckets. Oh, look at that. So in there, that is a, a dictaphone, right? So you could you could record as you went down the road speaking into a microphone, which is hanging on the side there. Uh, a very interesting factory option back in the day, the rally pack gauges. Uh, I had a friend of mine who had one of those dictaphones in a car, and he said the purpose of that is so when you were driving it way faster than the speed limit, you could dictate your last will before you went over a cliff. Let's hope that ain't gonna happen. Very cool. Man, lots of stuff to see. G bodies, of course, always popular. 88 Cutlass, I'm going to guess, by the composite headlamps. Good looking car. About an 83 Ford pickup truck. And here we have one of the Chevy SS's. This was very similar to the GTO. Uh, if they continued the GTO longer, these cars, a lot of them came as police cars. Six liter V8 under the hood. They made great power based on that Australian Holden platform. We'll zip up to the front row here. Clean little Corvette. I believe we've done some work on this one too. And it's in fast company parked next to a Viper GTS Coupe. Always dig these cars. So there's some neat functional styling in this and some nods here and there. So this is kind of an adaptation of what, you know, a Shelby Daytona Coupe might have been in the 90s, early 2000s. And one of the styling nods, of course, the, the blue color with the white Le Mans stripes, uh, the vents up here. But also, if you look closely at the roof, it has what is known as the Gurney Bubble so there's a little high point there, a little high point here. And that's because uh, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Gurney, the racer, was very tall. And when he raced Le Mans, they actually pounded a bubble into the roof so that his helmet would clear. So whenever you see a car today that has that, that's what that's all about. Of course, the, the big sloping styling in the back, similar to that... Uh, Shelby Daytona Coupe from back in the mid-60s. Very clean 280Z. This is a, a, a beautiful car. A couple things interesting on this. This is one of the early 70s years when the, the bumpers started to get bigger because of U.S. crash 
and safety regulations, which, you know, all the automakers had to start making the bumpers bigger. Dotson did a good job of trying to integrate those as much as possible without ruining the styling of the car because this is such a pure, awesome style as a, uh, a little GT car. This one, of course, manual turbine wheels. Love the mirrors. Looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Camera and a little hard to see inside with the, the glare in the window, but great looking car. Man, we are, uh, we got a lot to see. A lot to see, friends. Some late model Mopar performance. This uh, 392 Challenger TA. These cars, you might have seen the news this past week that uh, there is the end of the line of production coming on these at the end of the year before they start making, I don't know, an electric version they proposed. Big news flash on that. I think they showed the concept. There wasn't a, a ready to buy car, but we'll see. Great looking Dodge. I love these chargers. This is in aqua is the color. 440 Magnum under the hood. The cool thing about these Mopars is that from the factory, all the inner fenders and the aprons and the firewall were all painted body color. So the engine really kind of jumps out when you look at it. This was an, this one's an SE with the vinyl top. It's a 68. There's another neat detail on these cars. On the, this trim, a lot of times the trim is mounted to the rear window. In this case, uh, the trim's actually attached to the front window that rolls down. So when the window's down, if this one's up, there's just a glass leading edge and it's just super clean looking. But what this also does is it provides a little windbreak as the air goes across. But I always love the way these cars fit. Even from the factory, they were so tight. <laughs> I know, I'm glad we Chrysler got really had it going on. Here's Kevin. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Look at the, the uh, bumper fit. Good to see you, buddy. How you been? Been great. How you been? Hanging in there? Trying to. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, got some of the Firebird Fest guys over here hanging out. Very cool. What'd you bring out? Like 79. Awesome. Well, we'll go take a look at it. All right. Earlier this year, there was a great event called the Firebird Fest. It's uh, been going on for a few years now, and it's a multi-day event that does fun things. They go to racetracks, they go to wineries, they go to uh, concerts. They, they came to the little town of Waterloo, Illinois, where, uh, where I live, and had a car show in the town square. And this 79 Trans Am was part of it, for sure. Great looking car. Interesting to see black car, black interior. A lot of these had the tan interior 79 of course being one of the highest production numbers of any of these things but still cool shaker hood awesome looking great good to see you hey take a look at this gto super clean black car i'm gonna get a better look at it from this angle 1970 Ram Air 3 Judge. Look at that. Just a beautiful car. And also, you know, kind of featured in our film tonight, Dazed and Confused. Uh, features a an Orbit Orange version. I got to throw a shout out to our friend Murray Comant, who uh, is an artist who did the t-shirt design for us for this year and incorporated the GTO and also incorporated... A Supra from Fast and Furious because we're doing both films. We call that t-shirt Fast and Confused. Very cool duster. I always love that 340 wedge graphic. Double meaning there. It's kind of on an angle like a wedge. So kind of a, a neat little approach. These cars always remind me of the uh, the Cars Heartbeat City record album, right? Who remembers that? That was on the cover. All right, trucks are in force. Uh, lots of fun stuff back here, man. Here's an old Mercury, a 53. 
featuring a lot of classic custom touches. You got your lakes pipes, you got your see the mercury from the factory had this kind of bubble skirt looking thing a lot of people added a skirt to a different type of car to make it have that bubble but this one has a a skirt extended down there but this the rest of this is just part of the car sun visor some big dagmars up in front on the bumper and of course the uh the pinstripes giving it a little bit of attitude who says four doors can't be cool not this guy. I drive that thing anywhere. 70 Chevelle SS 454. Receiving a flyer for another show. Uh, we actually have a rainbow up there. Look at that, huh? A rainbow ends at the bottom of the, uh, at the drive-in. How about that? got a cutlass convertible these are cool i think you can get these these wheels from year one it's a plus size aluminum version of the oldsmobile super stock two wheel this one is sporting the outside air induction hood with the flush mounted locks this looks to be about a 70 convertible good looking car got a good looking 57 over here this one's got a few hey guys few tricks up its sleeve notice the the wheels and the stance and it's a hard time or it's not a hard top it's a post how we doing friends how's it going so you you guys got a little wet in this one huh that's just part of the deal there you go very cool well have fun tonight thanks for coming out check out the unbelievable flame job on this firebird so the, what's that i'm looking yeah so there, there's flames there's skulls hidden in this this is one of those cars that you can probably look at this for a long time and find more stuff and, it, and it's a uh, formula hood with the ram air scoops formula 350 with a three-speed manual pretty neat saginaw transmission being a formula, it's got the wood grain instead of the engine turn dash. Good looking car. 72. Dig it. Here we are, friends. A 71 AMC Gremlin. It's even blue. I'm sure these guys are sick of hearing about Wayne's World with the uh, Pacer. The Gremlin, of course, kind of the preceder to the, the Pacer that eventually happened. But these are neat great looking car if you're into the cam back styling the uh, german designer herman herman cam came up with that slash wedge design and you saw it on things that were not just cars you'd see it in, in uh, industrial design too but the theory is you know less is more you cut that thing off you can have room for a hatchback you got a little bit of room in the back seat and you have a nice little utility car this one Look at the uh, folding top with the rack. Yeah. Watch this. Nice. Yeah. So what was this option called on the Gremlin? Fun in the Sun Center. The Fun in the Sun. I know Buick did something similar called the Sun Coupe. We used to call them the Civ Coupe because they always leaked. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Cool little car. What's under the hood? Uh, 232.6. 232.6. Yeah, I dig it. Good to see. Thanks for bringing it out. Thanks for having me. Oh, hey, appreciate it, man. You better close it up. I see a couple of raindrops. <laughs> Here's a very cool Plymouth Sport Fury. Convertible once again. How you doing, buddy? All right, how you doing, sir? All right. One of the things I always liked about this Plymouth and Mopar put their badges and their names in all kinds of different places. The Plymouth is on the bumper back here, right? Who'd have thought that? Sport Fury badge. And look at these taillights. Remember I was talking about the fit before? Everything kind of flushed in. Nice crisp little bumper. Great body line. These little 
red, white, and blue chevrons on the side. And this has not only the color, but then an engine turn panel right next to it. So cool. Full length console and the bucket seats. Not a push button shift, but that's quite okay. Maybe a 383 under the hood, I'm gonna guess. Air conditioning. How you doing, buddy? Very cool car. Commando 383 V8. Now this car, when it was new, uh, had a little pocket mounted somewhere either on the far, well, there it is right there, that little pocket. And when you went to the dealer, you would take a thing out of here called a Certa card. And it was a little plastic credit card looking thing. I don't know what it says on there. It's hard for me to see. But that was the, the warranty information was stored right there in the inner fender on the, on the core support. Pretty neat. Lots of great stuff. Monte Carlo SS. Another late model Camaro white Z28 Camaro. Like a 79 maybe. I see the double rainbow now. Yeah, we got duels going on. Good to see you guys. How you been? Brought the Mustang on? Not in the rain? Yeah, this one's killer. Uh, we featured this car in uh, kind of the preview of cars coming to the drive-in cruise. Great looking color. Unusual. And the, the stripe package too. I believe this is a 302 car. And it is, uh, it's not a mock. Still a great car. New Maverick. Of course, is a truck now. We're going to uh, take a walk around and see what's going on in the uh, screen number two area, which is our Fast and Furious screen side. Looks like we've got some people that might know each other, judging by the similarities of some of these Impalas and their multicolored lights. I'm gonna guess these are our friends from the Lone Car Club. Mr. Chris Holland and friends. Let's see. If that's a red Oldsmobile, then I might be right. Hey, how we doing friends? Good. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. How you doing, Chris? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You brought the Oldsmobile out? Yes, sir. It's looking good. Yes, sir. Thank you. 34,000 original miles. 34,000 original. This is 79, 78? 79. 79. Look at that interior. Look at that. He's got a modern screen. This is just like plush. You know, like driving around your living room, like they used to say. Old Delta 88 Royale. These guys here in the, the Lone Car Club have a great time. They come to a lot of events and they do a lot of cruising throughout the St. Louis area. They know how to have fun with their cars. And we love to see it. I think they've been coming here every year. Nice four-door 62 Chevy. Very cool. Oh man, we got uh, some more neat ones back here. The Luxury Le Mans. How you doing guys? Good to see you. These, uh, it's cool. You could take a Pontiac Le Mans, which a lot of times we see done up, you know, like a GTO or a, a real aggressive looking car, but Pontiac from the factory sold them in the Luxury Le Mans package, which had, again, a, a wheel skirt, white striped tires, Vinyl Tom, split bench seat with a armrest that came down, but when the armrest was down, it looks kind of like buckets, right? All part of that luxury Le Mans package. Pretty neat. I think it says on here, so, oh yeah, here we go. This one, it's an original car. It's lived a good life. Great color. It's a, it's a green silver. I don't know what the name of the color is, but very cool. Fast forward to a 1990 Fox Body Mustang. Uh, this is kind of interesting. It's a 5.0 car, obviously. It's an LX 5.0. It's got a the rear rack without the strips. 
So usually these things have like a rubber edged metal strip on the luggage rack. I don't know what transmissions in this one, we'll find out. This would be an AOD automatic. I owned an 86 Mustang, kind of similar to this one. A lot of fun. And here we go. 68 Mercury Cougar, love this car. So many neat styling elements on this car. Uh, right in the back, you've got these vertical trim pieces. This is cast pot metal, this is not plastic. Of course, the sequential tail lights when you hit the turn signal. Uh, the exhaust on this one tucks out from underneath. What they used to call the formal roof line. So not really a, a fastback that was a, an angle but uh, kind of a little tighter roof line. Great, great shape in the body cove. These have uh, a good assortment of warning lights plus the gauges. This one is an automatic on the floor. No console though, bucket seats. Let's see if it's got an overhead, overhead console. This one does not. Some of these had an optional indicator system up there, disc brakes. Remember we saw those taillights with the verticals in it well here they are again on the front and look at that like magic the hood opens <laughs> that's all right it means it's being driven the mercury 302 of course a ford 302 air conditioning power steering it's a cougar it's a luxury car you gotta have all the fun power stuff the nickname for this front end they used to call it the electric shaver because it kind of looks like an electric shaver i think it's awesome you got the mighty proud cougar cat walking over there. And of course these flip when the headlights come on. Neat stuff. How you doing? Hi, how you doing, sir? Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Beautiful Thank you. Camaro. Thank you. Well, that's a great color. Hyper blue metallic. Hyper blue metallic. How are you guys doing? Another great looking Camaro. That's Inferno Orange, right? Yeah, see? Hyper blue. Look at the scoops. Very interesting. Hey, we've got uh, some cousins over there from my wife's family. Lots of neat cars all around. All the trucks in the back, uh, they do that so that, uh, you know, you, you don't block somebody behind you when you're at the drive-in because you got to be able to see the screen, right? Uh, that van is very cool. It's a, uh, a Ford van that last winter they put on a a 4x4 chassis. It's the family car. It's uh, basically unstoppable now. Very cool. But this orange Plymouth is one that we always like to see. How are you? This is our friend, Mr. Cantrell. And uh, it's looking good, buddy. Thank you. Good to see it. You too. And I, I'm impressed. You guys match the car with the, the <laughs> seats and, and the shirt and the whole thing. This one, at this time of night, if you get the right, the right sunlight, the color on this looks insane with the uh, kind of ghosted flames in there. Great street ride. Flames on the interior panel. Hey, Hoss. And uh, custom console. This is a 39 Plymouth, if I remember correctly. Cool car. Oh yeah. How you doing? Get another quick look at the van. Way cool. I remember seeing this before it was a four-wheel drive. Driving around town. Yeah, right on. I have a uh, soft spot for vans. My family had a 79 Maxi van. It was a Dodge. But this is pretty cool. The Dodge vans don't seem to have survived much like the Ford ones. How you doing, buddy? Of the rainbow. Oh, the rainbow? Oh, yeah. I got a couple pictures of the rainbow. I see the rainbow. You ever, you ever see a rainbow before? Yes. Yeah? I see rainbow. You ever see a double rainbow? Did you see before? There was two of them up there. One on top of the other. Yeah, you can see it right now. You see it? There's two rainbows. One over there. I see a rainbow. One over there. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm making a video, so uh, but I'll show you later on. All right? All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. And uh, some of our 
supporters, Country Financial is here tonight as a sponsor, as is Triple T Blasting. And they brought out three very cool Corvettes. Uh, of course, our friends at Raceline are here. We got our set up with uh, some of the prize giveaways. We always give stuff away at this event. And this year, we've got like $5,000 in things we're giving away. Big TVs uh, in some of these bags are, are uh, gift packages. There's Bluetooth speakers. We've got coolers. These guys at, at Country are giving away a Yeti. So cool. Uh, some of the, the merch. This is the official shirt this year. Fast and confused. Thank you, Mr. Murray Kumant. What do we see so far? What do you think? Oh my gosh, I haven't really left the tent, but um, we see lots of cars, we see lots of rainbows, we see happy people who don't give a hoot about the rain that was here and it's not coming anymore tonight. Everybody's excited about two movies. Everybody's excited about being on a Saturday and getting to stay out late and have a good time. Man. Everybody's excited. We get to see each other and have a lot of fun because that's what it's all about. Sounds like quite a deal. I've just been looking at cars. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hi, friends. Hi, Hi Nick. Uh, so we come full circle back to the uh, the cars here at the uh, the V8 trailer. Uh, still some cars creeping in. More rainbows. So we like to thank all the companies that help sponsor us. Property Peddlers, another one. The Edelbrock Group, the Comp Performance Group, Jay's Towing, Dakota Digital. Markarian Orthodontics. The list goes on and on. Dent care, paintless dent removal. Here's a cool shot between the 62 Chevy and the Lincoln and the Breezeway. All lined up. How are we doing, friends? Good. All right, well, I think at this point, I'm gonna try and turn this camera around. So thanks for tuning in and uh, spending some time with us here at the 2022 Drive-In Cruise event. Uh, if you're watching this somewhere, maybe next year you can join us. Uh, this is the, the first year we've done this on a Saturday. In the past, this has been on a Thursday night, and it made it a little more difficult. But uh, obviously, the Saturday night seems to be a little more attractive. Look at this rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Uh, so we'll have photographs of this event on our website at driveincruise.com and we will let you know what's going on for next year. Every year with this event, we, we throw it out to the people, let you pick the movies, put up a poll, everybody votes. So it's a democratic thing. Um, and we hope you can join us. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time.